how my cat got me grounded. And yes, I mean my literal pet cat got me grounded. So a little background information, I was 16 and I was a freshman in high school and my parents were extremely strict. Now, of course, there was the usual no hanging out with boys, no hanging out with anybody on the weekdays. Well, my parents took it a step further. Actually, no, they took it like 10 miles further. I got my phone taken every night at six o'clock, even on the weekends, and my friends were only allowed to come over for eight hours exactly on the weekends. And they had to have a ride to and from my house. Well, usually my friend group and I were never invited to any kind of parties, but this one girl who had just moved to our school, she was throwing a huge party and she invited everybody, not just the popular kids. So obviously my friends begged me to go. They were like, please, like we can sneak over there. Your parents go to bed early anyways. Like for part two. Part two about how my cat got me grounded. And yes, I am talking about my pet cat. So like I said, my best friends are begging me to come out of the house. They're like, listen, like do whatever you have to to come to this party. This is the first and probably only party that we will ever be invited to in our entire lives. So at this point, I start planning to sneak out of my house. So my parents usually go to sleep at around 9.30, 10 o'clock at night. And they usually wake up at 5.30 in the morning. But since this party was on a Friday, obviously my parents aren't going to wake up at that time. They'll usually wake up around like maybe 9, 10 o'clock in the morning. So this gave me a perfect amount of time to do what I needed to do, come back and not get caught. But just in case, I made sure to turn off any alarms on their phone. But I also had to make sure that I had a foolproof plan to get out of the house and get back in. Now, of course, I couldn't go through any of the doors in the house because of the stupid ring doorbell. But there was one thing that did work in my favor. So my dad had been slowly but surely installing the window security alarms. But he hadn't made it to my room yet, so I was good to sneak out of my window. And thankfully, my window was on the first floor. Like for part three. Part three about how my cat got me grounded, and yes, I am talking about my pet cat. So like I said, I had a foolproof plan to escape, okay? I was going to get out the window, and I was going to just crawl back in and act like nothing ever happened. But there was an issue with this, okay? My dad was supposed to fix my window because I somehow broke it. I don't even know how. But anytime that I go to put my window up, it just literally falls. And not only does it fall, it locks when it falls. And obviously, you can guess what will happen if it does fall. I won't be able to get back in the house, and I will somehow have to get in the house without my parents knowing, which is literally impossible. So I will be grounded for the rest of my life. So I was going to put a book between the window and the windowsill, but I didn't want it falling and making a lot of noise. So I decided to put a pillow there. So I stuck out of my house at 11 o'clock and I had the best time of my life, probably because that's the first and only time that I will ever be invited to any party. But fast forward, I go and I run to the side of the house to get into my window. And of course, the pillow is missing. And I'm looking around to see where the pillow went in my room. And of course, my cat is laying on it on the floor. So I tried messing with the window and then all of a sudden my parents walked in my room and saw me. The most embarrassing moment in my life was when I was in fourth grade and I decided to myself, like, yeah, I am Beyonce. Like, I'm going to be a professional singer. Like, duh. Like, obviously, since I was going to be in showbiz, I needed to sign up for the fourth grade talent show at my school. And I decided that I was going to sing The Climb by Miley Cyrus. Obviously, I'm not a one-trick pony, babe. So I also decided I needed to perform a step dance routine to the song for Galicious. The night of the talent show, everything is going great. I have practiced both performances a whopping total of five times each. <laughs> Found out that my mother wasn't gonna be able to make it to my performance, but babe, the show must go on, right? Like this is showbiz. I'm waiting for my turn and there are kids performing with like actual talent. Then to my absolute dismay, the girl that goes right before me decides to also sing The Climb by Miley Cyrus. Are you kidding me? Not only does she do that, but she gets a standing ovation and she's amazing, right? <laughs> it's my turn finally and I walk past this girl and I'm like, let my song. Like, ugh, I'm about to kill it. <laughs> I get up on stage, I grab my little mic. I'm about to have my Hannah Montana moment. I start the song and I forget every single lyric in the song. I get past the first verse of the song, and then after that, all I can remember is it's all about the climb. So I keep singing that lyric over and over and over again for three minutes straight until the adults that are coordinating this whole thing finally tell me, like, come on, like, you gotta go. I'm getting humiliated. The whole crowd, without my mother in it, stands up and is clapping and screaming like, woo! humiliated backstage but remember i have a fergalicious step dance routine to do with my three best friends who are counting on me so again the show must go on step out on stage and the whole crowd sees that i'm in the step dance routine and they're screaming for me and i'm just standing there like yeah like they love me like the people just love me and then like something out of the movie every single one of us forgets our dance really i don't know if you know anything about step dance but you really can't forget a step because like a lot of noise is happening it literally sounds like thunder is rumbling inside of this auditorium girl decided she was gonna improv ballet i decided i was gonna pretend to throw a lasso at the crowd like it was absolutely a mess the song ends the crowd's going wild we go in the backstage and argue with each other about who forgot what first after we're done we're told we have to go sit in a seat in the auditorium so that we could watch the other people do their performances as i'm walking to my seat every person in the auditorium is trying to give me high fives and telling me how funny i am and i was just like it wasn't supposed to be funny i ran home sobbing my eyes out and i can't even tell you the things that i would do to see a video of that night i literally didn't go to school the next day because of how embarrassed i was so my wife poured a bottle of water on me and i think i'm done this happened a few weeks ago. My wife and I were arguing about how to cut onions. I had stupidly thought that I could do it all, that I could chop up onions and add them to the chili as she asked. 
She came by and got pissed, telling me that I cut them too coarse, that they were supposed to be much smaller, and that the chili was ruined because I'd put them in the pot. I said, okay, let me just get them out. They're just on top, and I was just trying to do what you asked. I can cut them smaller, and I start to pull them out with the spoon. She says, no, that's okay, don't do it, she'll just do it. She pushes me out of the way and takes the knife out of my hand. I let go. I start to complain about how I did what she asked, and if she wanted them put on the chili at the end, she should have just asked for that instead of me putting them into the chili while it was still on the stove. I desperately wish I could do something, anything right. I retreat to the other room as I'm pretty freaking sad. I'm 28 years old and I can't make canned chili apparently. I sit down on the bed trying to stay out of my wife's way so she can fix my mistakes. She brings in dinner and I'm ready to drop the problem. I eat and she eats half of her food then brings it back up. I apologize multiple times. She doesn't seem satisfied. I tried to explain myself then that I feel like maybe she should have communicated a little better if she'd wanted the onions as a garnish instead of just in the chili. She tells me I'm not listening, that I'm cutting her off. I don't understand. I feel like we're taking turns. I desperately try to stay calm, keep my voice quiet. As calmly as possible, I say that I would appreciate it if she could be more specific about what she wants. Then she snaps and pours the entire glass bottle of water all over me. As she does, I can hear myself saying, please don't, as water runs down my face and back. It's making a huge mess. My first instinct is to clean the water up, wipe it up, get the blanket dry. I tried so hard to be good. I tried so hard to keep my calm and it got me nowhere. I get my keys and leave, still crying. My wife starts crying as I walk out, telling me I don't care about a relationship and that I'm just abandoning her. I just tell her as calmly as I can that I need to be alone for a little bit. I go out for an hour and sit by the library. I'm cold and wet. She calls me several times. I don't really want to answer. I haven't been okay since this. I know it seems stupid, but this event has pulled up a lot of bad things she did to me in the past when she was going through a lot of things in her life. She's apologized for some, others she doesn't even remember. Verbal, emotional, physical. I don't think I can stay married. It's like everything keeps boiling up. I don't know why this. Maybe I'm overreacting. I don't know. This incident just sounds like it's the straw that broke the camel's back. I don't even know where to start. I'm literally still so flustered and shaken up. Yesterday, I was in TJ Maxx and I was by the lighting section and I get these weird intuitions that are like, get away from the section. Like, I kept telling me to get away from the section. And so I walked away and not even 10 seconds later, these kids come running in, literally light fireworks off in the back of TJ Maxx. This is by all the lighting and whatnot, so it literally goes up in flames and blows up. It sounded like gunshots. Everybody hits the floor, especially with everything going on in the world right now. People were freaking out, running out of the store, trampling each other. The lady was on the microphone saying, everybody get out of the store right now. We didn't know if the place was gonna go up in flames. I left my entire car and literally bolted out of the store. I got to my car, the parking lot was a flipping disaster i'm shaking at this point i don't even know what to do can't function it's like yeah these kids thought they were trying to be funny or whatever or they wanted the adrenaline rush but they didn't realize how much damage they did and the fact that they literally could have killed somebody i don't know what happened i got out of there at the same time this poor dad was running around trying to find his little son because he couldn't find his son he was running around tj maxx crying and screaming i felt so bad for these workers who couldn't even leave and these kids literally ran past me and got away the only reason I knew it was fireworks because as I was running out, the people who were literally right next to him said that these kids let off fireworks in the back of the store. 